Hey everybody, welcome back to another dividend investing video. Now who doesn't love getting a raise? These types of companies I've been buying in our new public portfolio are all companies that have a track record of increasing their dividend payouts to shareholders year over year. This portfolio is only a couple months old now, but I'm pleased with the dividend raises our long-term dividend growth holdings have announced so far. In fact, just in November of 2022, we've had three of the companies in the portfolio announce generous raises. I want to cover these three companies in greater detail and show you why I have been buying stock in these companies. I'm Nick, and this is the Dividend Growth Income Channel. Thank you for joining me today. I'm not a financial advisor, just a guy who wants to share my love of dividend growth investing and building financial independence with passive income. If you could please do me a favor and smash that like button and subscribe to keep up with future videos it really helps out more than you could imagine in bringing you quality dividend investing content. Now, these are not my buy recommendations. I'm highlighting what I believe are high quality dividend stocks to hold for the long term. But always remember, price is what you pay and value is what you get. So let's get to it. Three amazing dividend growth stocks that are giving us raises for November of 2022. Company number one, Snap-on ticker SNA. Snap-on announced a 14% dividend raise on November 4th, 2022, and this marks the 13th consecutive year Snap-on is raising its quarterly dividend payment. Headquartered in Kenosha, Wisconsin and part of the industrial sector, Snap-on is an American designer, manufacturer, and marketer of high-end tools and equipment for professional use in the transportation industry, including the automotive, heavy-duty equipment, marine, aviation, and railroad industries. Their tools are sold by dealers, not in retail stores operating under the philosophy that a customer's time is too valuable to spend going shopping. They have Snap-on franchisees visit their customers directly on site on a weekly schedule with a van loaded with products for purchase. And this has been in business since 1920. Snap-on trades in the low 230s. This is a company that has been performing better than average over the 2022 bear market. Snap-on is up over 6% over the last year. Zooming out, the 5-year performance is 50% and the 10-year performance is 213%. Snap-on is trading at a PE of 13.8, right in line with its 5-year average of 13.6. Of course, it's come up some over the rally that has transpired over the first part of November 2022. While before I thought this was an undervalued company today, it's trading closer to a fair value in my estimation. It's a cheaper company than average industrials company with a sector average of 18.6. Snap-on's dividend yield is 2.77%, which is 11% above its five-year average of 2.49. This is one indication that the stock could still be undervalued. Snap-on is on a quarterly dividend payout schedule paying in the months of March, June, September, and December in the amount of $1.62 for a total annual payout of $6.48. Snap-on maintains a healthy payout ratio in terms of both earnings at 38%, and free cash flow at 50%, room to grow in a Simply Safe Dividends safety score of 99. With the recently announced dividend, we are looking at 13 years of consecutive races and 83 years without a reduction. That's an impressive track record. The four year average annual growth rate of 15%, and the latest raise is at 14%, which is stellar. Revenue growth is positive over the last decade. Sales were at 3.1 billion in 2012, and in the last 12 months, that number is nearly 4.8 billion. The company does not buy back a whole lot of shares regularly, but they do not dilute shareholders either. Snap-on has been covered by 11 Wall Street analysts in the last 90 days. One rates it a strong buy, two a buy, five a hold, one a sell, and two a strong sell. So Wall Street isn't particularly bullish on Snap-on, but as a dividend growth investor, this one checks so many boxes, and I believe this to be an underrated dividend stock worthy of inclusion on your watch list. If your portfolio is lacking in the industrial sector, this could have a place and management appears to be committed to growing this dividend. We've been buying it up in our dividend growth income portfolio and will continue to do so. Company number two, Aflac, ticker AFL. Aflac announced a 5% dividend raise on November 4th, 2022. This marks the 40th consecutive year Aflac has been raising its quarterly dividend payment. Headquartered in Columbus, Georgia, Aflac is an American insurance company and the largest provider of supplemental insurance in the United States. Perhaps best known for its payroll deduction insurance coverage, which provides financial and protection in the event of illness or accident and you have to miss work. Today, Aflac is represented by over 76,000 associates in the United States and over 19,000 in Japan. And who isn't familiar with the duck? Now, Aflac trades around $70 at the time of publishing, but it's come up dramatically in early November 2022 rally as it was trading at $60 just a few short weeks ago. Aflac is up 
almost 25% over the last year. Zooming out, we have a 67% price gain over five years and a 10-year price gain of 179%. And this does not count dividends paid. Aflac is trading at a 13.3 PE, and this is a few points higher than the five-year average and a few points higher than the financial sector as a whole, which trades at 10.7. And for its dividend, it's yielding 2.39%, which is right in line with the five-year average of 2.41%. So Aflac today is looking reasonably valued, maybe fair value based on dividend yield. Now Aflac follows a quarterly dividend payout schedule the months of March, June, September, and December, paying 42 cents quarterly for an annual payout of $1.68. And the dividend makes up 32% of forward earnings. And that's great because we want to see this below 50% for insurers. So this is a dividend aristocrat with 39 years of dividend raises over the last five years. That average growth rate is 10%, and although the latest is 5%, so it could be slowing down, or perhaps there's some caution there due to the volatile nature of the markets and the prospect of a recession. Insurance seems like a place where some people may cut back if there is a need. Revenue for Aflac is consistently in the low 20s. Would like to see them do a better job of growing this going forward, but it is consistent. They have an aggressive buyback program. In 2012, there were 939 million shares outstanding, and today that number is 648 million. Aflac is covered by 13 Wall Street analysts over the last 90 days, three rated a buy, nine a hold, and one a sell. Aflac makes a great addition for a dividend portfolio that is lacking exposure to the insurance industry. And there are a couple other strong dividend payers in this business too. And I think Aflac is one of the stronger companies in that sector. And we've been buying it in our dividend growth income portfolio. We definitely prefer buying this in the 50s or 60s. But I'm going to continue to buy this one for our long-term portfolio because we love that dividend growth track record. And this account is mainly focused on dividend growth stocks. Company number three, Automatic Data Processing, ticker ADP. ADP announced a 20% dividend raise on November 9th, 2022. This marks the 48th consecutive year ADP is raising its quarterly dividend payment. In two years, we'll be making a video of ADP becoming a dividend king. Headquartered in Patterson, New Jersey and founded in 1949, ADP is an American provider of human resources management software and services. If you work for an employer, there is a decent chance. ADP is handling getting you paid and handling things like taxes and benefits. ADP is the largest player in this business with about 10% of the market share, which still gives them plenty of room to grow. ADP trades on the NASDAQ is trading around $250 at the time of publishing. ADP is up about 9% over the last year. Zooming out, the 5-year performance is 122%, and the 10-year performance is an impressive 415%. Now, ADP is trading at a PE of 30. This is a company that typically trades at a premium. And with their record of growth, it's easy to see why. The PE is pretty close to its five-year average, but at a premium to the information technology sector as a whole at 20.6. ADP is yielding 2.01, and this is also its five-year average. It was just brought back to this level with its latest dividend increase, as you can tell from the chart. And in their investor materials, they state they aim to return a 2% yield on their stock. And this one pays out on a quarterly schedule of January, April, July, and October with a $1.25% quarterly payment for an annual payout of $5. And ADP keeps that payout ratio around 55 to 60%, which is right around where we want to see it. And this is where they aim to keep it. Aim to keep a 2% yield on their stock, and they are growing their dividend at a double-digit rate every year. So this translates to price appreciation. ADP has been doing a great job of growing its revenues. In 2012, we brought in $9.44 billion. And in the last 12 months, they've brought in $16.9 billion. Love to see it. Also seeing consistent buybacks every single year, providing shareholders with more value. Now, 19 Wall Street analysts have covered ADP in the last 90 days. Two rated a strong buy. One rated a buy. 13 a hold. One a sell into a strong sell. So ADP checks off just about every box we want it to for a dividend growth stock, except on valuation. So investors have to decide for themselves if this is a company that warrants a PE at this level. If not, you can determine where you'd be comfortable adding this one and stick it on the watch list and be patient. Patience and consistency will pay off, especially when you are holding long-term compounders like ADP. Thanks for sticking with us, folks. If you could please like and subscribe, I'd like to see me do more in-depth look at any of these, including evaluation, and let me know in the comments. And please check me out on Twitter at Div Growth Income, and let's connect. For full disclosure, I am long on all three of these companies, 
Thanks again. You guys are awesome. And until next time, keep investing.